uh, I, I do appreciate that. Oh, good sir. Um, while at the same time that news of Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser was actually uh, ending there, at the same time, well, uh, as Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger, interestingly enough, at his first Cannes Film Festival, were actually attending the screening at said festival of Indiana Jones 5. It's very kind of interesting. Um, there have been some others in our space that are kind of pointing this out, but I kind of wanted to reiterate here to you guys that they would announce while Kathleen Kennedy is enjoying herself at uh, at this uh, momentous event for this for this film that Galactic Star Cruiser was closing, which has largely been seen as kind of a Lucasfilm product, right? And that uh, there are a range of cuts that are going to be made to um, Disney Plus in terms of content, and one of those actually includes Willow. So while she was actually sitting there with this screening and before she actually comes out and faces these questions about these 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 items these things pop up and we're hearing that she wasn't made previously aware that these things would actually happen and especially at this time i think it's very very interesting and well you have a triple whammy going on here because while well, the reviews coming out of um the Cannes film festival for indian jones 5 have been middling at best i mean it's it they've been kind of all over the place where you have people who say, it, you know, uh, who who have reacted positively to the film, but with some caveats and some qualifiers, and some people who have absolutely, seemingly hated the film. Uh, if we take a look at this one right here from Variety, Indiana Jones 5 gets lukewarm five-minute cans ovation as Harrison Ford says an emotional goodbye. And this kind of details uh, that uh, Harrison Ford was I, I in fact very, very emotional at this that there was this kind of uh kind of post credit applause that actually occurred and uh, he got uh, teary eyed which is nice to see but uh, they have some they have some caveats attached to this which is very interesting it says yes the applause lasted for five minutes but by Kane standards that's more of a polite formality so apparently this is something that they do every single time yeah. uh, that a uh, a, a theatrical production makes it to this point um it also says here indeed the standing ovations for ford were louder before the movie played the film's elaborate action scenes and witty one-liners delivered by waller bridge received less than rapturous response inside the theater during parts of the 142 minute film audience members could be heard whispering out of boredom in french uh, oh. that was a pretty scathing kind of uh article right there and I guess there is more um, deadline. However, much action swirls on the surface of this kind of film. Its foundations are built of reassuring nostalgia. Just hearing John Williams score, he had another variant of the heroics and theatrics of this original. Makes anyone of a certain age feel that everything is momentarily right with the world. Not necessarily a glowing review, but positive, like I said. Um, the iconic archaeologist's uh, swan song is a little safe, but it's an enjoyable old school action adventure with more weight than cream of the crystal skull. Hmm. If we're comparing it there to that film, maybe not good. The Irish times though, they just took off. They, they, they took off all of the inhibitors right here for this one. Nobody with a brain in their heads will compare dial destiny favorable to the first three films. There is a sense throughout of, uh, of a project struggling to stand beneath the weight of its history. And if you actually go into that review right there by the Irish times, it's real bad. <laughs> real, real bad. I believe right now, uh, OG, could you look it up real fast? What uh, the Rotten Tomatoes score is for oh, yeah. this? I got that. Um, oh, one moment. It is. Let's see here. Let's check out that Tomatoes score. And that was um, the, the issue with this film. This was either going to be a make or break. Is like It could have been done really, really well or really, really bad. There was no going middle ground for this. Well, right now it's sitting at 50. And how many reviews? Uh, 30. 30. Now, okay. I do want to say this. I'm not encouraged by this in any way. Look, I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan. To, to, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell everybody, oh, oh, this is fine. It's not fine. It's not yeah. fine. But I do want to provide a little bit of nuance here because there is a little Please. bit of – there's a little bit of narrative driving out mm -hmm. there on, on, on social media and stuff. When, when Super Mario Brothers premiered sure. with the critic score, which is the same as we're looking at here with Indiana Jones, at like 40-something percent, 
the narrative on Twitter and social media was critics don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, the minute this movie hit 45, 50, suddenly the critics know what they're talking about. You know, right. before it was a big conspiracy that like, you know, th these critics don't like Mario because it's not woke. What well, does that mean? They don't like Indiana Jones because it's not woke. I guess yeah. this movie is not woke, apparently. So I, I just I just want to say that because I do think that's a huge factor in all of this. But now with that all behind me this is not a good score. Like we can't pretend yeah. we can't sugarcoat this and say, yeah, you know what? This is fine. You guy don't even sweat it. I'm worried. I am extremely worried about this and movie to provide more nuance with that. You know, a lot of people felt that critics were maybe over analyzing Mario and that it wasn't that necessarily deep. And I do think that is true. There was no level of depth there for sure, which I think held it back for the critics specifically. But some of these arguments coming out of the critics for this film, uh, seem to be maybe a little bit more justified, if only because they're reacting to things that other audiences are seeing when it comes to trailers and some other promotional material for this film. For example, a lot has been said about the CGI and the quality of it, and in these reviews, they're very much like, yeah, you can tell that these things were filmed on sound stages. Yes, you can, you can, the palpable action that was part of the first, you know, original three is not present here, specifically because you can tell the tracking's not great, or the backgrounds don't necessarily um mesh well with the visuals in the foreground and so forth right kind of takes you out of that experience they say that the dialogue is a little bit clunky in some areas which we kind of have seen a little bit in the kind of promotional materials and so forth so it's it's interesting the justification for these things i think this this is a little bit more justified look that being said though it's really going to come down to the normies and what they feel so yeah. let's go ahead and wait on that mm -hmm. the issue though is this this film at this expense, anywhere between three hundred million dollars, even more than that, really had to benefit from domestic audiences seeing it multiple times. And yeah. with these reviews, I don't know if that's a thing right now because at least with Super Mario Brothers, even if the critics didn't like it, you you still knew that it was going to get massive response because well, there had been really no true Mario Brothers movie. Until that point, and people were kind of hungry for it, right? Whereas Indiana Jones, you're coming off of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, where people were a little bit maybe disenfranchised with the franchise. Right. And so people kind of had to be convinced to go back in. I just don't know where that convincing argument comes from if it's, you know, even if the critics aren't kind of per uh, persuaded by it. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's an issue for this movie for sure. Um, it's an issue for this movie for sure. I mean, you you have to, like you said, uh, Dre, this movie has like a, a massive budget. This movie has to get people into the theater, not once, but twice even. It has, it has to, it has to get people excited. And look, I have no doubt the opening weekend will be pretty solid because it's Indiana Jones, right? Mm -hmm. But if we have weekend number two and it falls off like 70%, this movie's yeah. in big trouble, dude. It's in it's, big, big it, trouble. It, it has to, it has to sustain leg life. It, it, it can't does. just be it just can't be based off of opening weekend because that can opening weekend could either be a massive success and it continues that trend mm -hmm. or it can be a blunder by week two or three or it actually can may sustain like Avatar where it's like one big clump in the beginning and then it just kind of steadies out but it still maintains money. I, I'm rooting I for this. Know. I'm rooting for this movie because I love Indiana Jones, um, but I, I don't think there's any chance it's going to do an, an Avatar like a, like like a leg out. It's not going to leg out. I don't think it's going to leg out like Avatar. I really don't because I just think that this movie. I don't know the review. I mean, I, I get it. The critics are look. The Cannes Film Festival is like the Oscars. Okay, mm -hmm. these people don't like Hollywood summer films. They don't. They didn't. Right. You put these same. You put the same crowd in front of Endgame, and they're not going to like it. They're not going to like it. This isn't the same crowd. But at the end of the day, though, oh, man, these reviews are the, rough. The numbers are coming out. I just want to go ahead and provide some context and some some additional nuance for this, right? So the, the numbers are just coming out for Fast 10, which we have said that's like a $340 million film. Uh, so somewhat comparable to Indiana Jones 5's uh, 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 budget and marketing spend and all of that. 
And you can see right here, it's earning $319 million in its opening weekend, which is good. But you have to remember that of the bulk of that, I believe $250 million worth, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, gee, maybe you can you know, point, point out where I'm wrong here. But I believe oh, $250 right. million worth of that is made internationally. And I don't think – that's kind of the scary thing about this is I don't think – Indiana Jones 5 will benefit from that because, first of all, it's a very unknown franchise to large portions of the world. And second, it doesn't have maybe the bombastic action or the big Hollywood film stars that maybe a Fast 10 uh, does and benefits from for specifically those international markets. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Domestically, it really has to do the big numbers. And I just don't know if that's going to be possible with these kind of critical reviews. Well, and even if you crush it uh, internationally, like Fast X crushes it internationally, but even yeah. even crushing it internationally isn't a necessarily a 100% win because Correct. you only get 25% of the box office in China. Yep. So yep. you can make a and, and reduced dollars. output from other markets like uh, 40%, so to speak. Go ahead. Right. No, exactly. So it's like, yeah, you make like the dollar amount sounds high, but that studio isn't getting 100 percent of that dollar right. amount, you know, yeah. and so that he's not going to do what Fast X is doing overseas. There's no way. No, I, I, I just I don't see it. I, re I really don't see it. Um, and uh, this is kind of unfortunate, too, because, well, um, you know, our predictions for a week showing, let's say, for a little mermaid in China <laughs> Was, looks like to be accurate right here. This comes from Louis Verhoeven on Twitter. Meanwhile, in China's box office, ticket pre-sales for The Little Mermaid showed no signs of reaction. Disney's live action finished uh, S-U-N with a scary uh, 13,000 total after three days of pre-sales for the whole May 25th to 28th period. Could be the worst opening ever for a Hollywood temple in China. Like I said, I mean, the you know, it, you can kind of see, you can kind of predict based on some cultural traditions let's say yeah uh, that, that are maybe different from ours yeah where things might fall off i don't think that any engine will necessarily suffer from the same things but don't expect a much bigger response than that for various reasons little little mermaid was dead on arrival and disney knows that in china there's a reason why the po the marketing yeah. and look i'm not condoning what disney's doing i'm not i'm just telling the facts but like there's a reason why Disney changed the marketing materials for Black Panther in China. I'm just going to say that. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. Yep. Mm. That Little Mermaid was not going to do anything in China. Exactly. This is not a shock. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, though, I'll, I'm going to say a bold statement right now. And I told Ray this on the phone the other day. Here we go. Word of mouth has been actually pretty good for Little Mermaid. Um, I know mm -hmm. Christian Harloff really liked it. I've been hearing a yeah. lot of good positive buzz from that premiere. And aren't they, been, aren't they aren't they anticipating like a hundred and ten million dollar opening? It's about the same as what the Aladdin uh, live action did, which ultimately went up on to do a billion. Not to say Little Mermaid's gonna do a billion. I'm not saying right. that, but it, it, yeah, it's opening in and around the vicinity of that one ten, one twenty opening weekend. We'll see how it legs out. No pun intended, but. That movie has gotten a lot of positive momentum lately. I think when people saw that one, I saw a lot more positive buzz for that, saying this is one of the stronger live action uh, films they've done, um, yada, yada, yada. That's gained momentum. Plus, you have the, the lovely Holly Bailey doing the promotional tour. You can't lose with her. She's, she's fantastic. Indy, though, is a different story. Indy has me more worried than Little Mermaid because Indy is not getting that good word of mouth like Mermaid has. Indy is very much a... Um, it, it's it's mixed, but it's leans way more negative. Well, and it like, seems like that, and it seems like there was a bigger like promotional tour with the Little Mermaid, you know, opposite of Indiana Jones. I mean, it's still out there, but I mean, I see uh, Halle Bailey on like every talk show. She's on Tamron Hall. She's on, you know, she uh, uh, um, today live and you know it's like a good morning america it's like she's on all these higher end platforms showcasing this film and you really yeah. don't see that too much with with harrison ford they pitched it with the oscars right uh that was like the only mm -hmm. film that they did that with which was very very um uncouth let's say for the hollywood elite over there uh for that kind of presentation you brought up uh, aladdin og uh earlier yeah. on and i want to go yeah. ahead and highlight this this was interesting oh yeah the so, mena yeah mena so uh mena masad who who i believe masood who uh starred as aladdin in the uh, aladdin live action remake uh said this on twitter which i thought was uh, 
uh, maybe inadvisable. Our film yeah. was unique in that audiences went to watch it multiple times. It's the only way we reached the billion dollar mark with our opening. My guess is The Little Mermaid doesn't cross the billion dollar mark, but we'll undoubtedly get a sequel, but, which is, uh, uh, I wouldn't necessarily said that. For no, sure. but, but, and where does he get this information? Like, like, okay, okay. let me put it this way. He's sure. saying that Aladdin made it because multiple people went back to the theater multiple times to see right. that movie. And that's, that's true. Right. He's not wrong. But how come why is he assuming that's not gonna happen here? Like he hasn't I think there's a there's a couple things playing out here. One is well, and, and, well, well, and also crazy. well and also too, he mentioned about a sequel. Wasn't there supposed to be a sequel that's, to the Aladdin? That's what I was yeah. I was just about to refer to it uh, there, George. I think there's just two things playing out here. One is the Sour Grapes, that their sequel that they were supposed to get is not happening because, well, Will Smith decided to <laughs> assault somebody <laughs> in front of the entire word at the, uh, not this last Oscars, but the last last Oscars. So that film is just dead in the water uh, as um, it's just not going forward. So I think there's a little bit of that. And two, I think there might be some, racial things going on here and how maybe you know uh how the bailey led production is actually uh served right by not only its audience but its studio as opposed to uh a mena uh starring uh a, a picture so i think there's some there's some interesting dynamics here playing out very yeah. inadvisable i wouldn't have done it oh gee i don't even know where he's getting the fact that this thing might not be make a billion dollars and might not have rewatchability it actually very much i might, think but- i think it's more so a classic psych out they usually call that like a classic psych out it's like it kind of they use it like with big time competitions. It's like it softens your competition. It doesn't make you go out to think that you're going to be overly successful than you are. That's what they call it. They call it a classic psycho. <laughs> well, the thing that is, is weird to me is like, and I've said this before, I, I have very little desire to see this mermaid movie. I, I really don't. I, it, to me, I put it on the same level as the Aladdin live action movie or just about any of the other live action movies. It, it's, it's kind of, Eh, whatever you know it's no better no worse than any of these other ones it's just funny to me like men is like out here talking like aladdin with some like grand masterpiece some amazing movie people went back to see it some, like mm-hmm. aladdin was just so special it's like your yeah. movie didn't look any better than this one dude like come on you know like yeah, it's like i said inadvisable <laughs> i wouldn't have done it especially for my career prospects in hollywood i believe he since has he deleted the tweet i'm not sure anyway you might want to oh think he about he that. He deactivated his Twitter. He oh, completely okay. deactivated right. so, his Twitter. So he went nuclear. Well, it's, like I said, inadvisable, right? But <laughs> these optics things are a very interesting game in Hollywood and how people react to those. For example, bringing it back to the Indiana Jones 5 discussion for a little bit. Again, Indiana Jones 5 gets kind of a, let's say, a, a, a more mediocre response than maybe the company was anticipating, right? Bob Iger is there. He had to have known that internally this thing didn't test super strong, but he decides to make his first appearance at Cannes here for this film. That's a very interesting thing playing out. At the same time this is actually going on, Willow's being announced to be taking taking off uh, Disney+. Plus. And the Galactic Star Cruiser, um, one of the most ambitious things that Disney has done ever in cooperation with Lucasfilm, is shutting down, blindsiding, Catherine well, Kennedy actually leaves the well, what I th- This is all very interesting. What it I is. think is funny with Willow is the transitional of how it was supposed to get a season two. And they have made that announcement Willow was getting a season two. And then it went from getting a season two to canceling season two to now it being completely removed off the Disney Plus platform. Like well, that. I, did they announce that they was going to be get a season? Because I think the writer could have said that they had written a season two. We'll see. I could have sworn. I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure. I thought they said it was confirmed that it was getting a season two. I could be wrong. Uh, Willow makes its premiere on the 30th of November 2022. I don't know how many episodes it actually had, but a few weeks later, obviously, we're now talking into 2023. And in the course of what five months this thing is now being announced to be taken off the platform and it's better as a tax write-off even with that impairment fee than it is actually providing content for disney plus and i think it's so funny that it is amazing and 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 to think that they use these things as headliners like when i when i was at the d23 expo they had a whole section of disney live action on the disney live action panel that was dedicated to willow 
Yep. It was like a, a, a 20, 25 minute where it showed clips of the show. They brought the actors out on the stage and it's like, no, it's like all that's in vain because it's, it's like you, you create these heavy, um, ambitious build ups and it's like, and then it just like falls flat on its face. So well, why, it, why leak this thing going right. away at that time while Kathleen Kennedy is in front of the media as she is, you know, why, I mean, if this thing didn't even get six months, this is very unorthodox. Go well, ahead, didn't sorry, we all, didn't we all out. say that once Indiana Jones comes out, this is going to be kind of Kennedy's uh, departure. <laughs> well, and here's the thing too. There's a lot going on here, and I know I know a lot of people kind of poo-poo the Kennedy stuff because there's been a million rumors for years now on her sure. leaving, and I and I totally understand when people are Ban- skeptical. Bantha poo-poo. <laughs> yes, exactly. Bantha but poo-poo. here's the thing, and Dre, you, you hit the nail on the head. There's something afoot with this, and I know this is gonna sound real conspiratorial, but there's something afoot with this because, Absolutely. like you said, Dre, they 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 dropped the Star Cruiser news the day of the Indy Five premiere at Cannes. That was major. And before that, same day, they dropped the Lake Nona news, which they knew would make major national news because of the of the DeSantis drama right now. Sure. So yep. you had the Lake Nona drama that they and put the pullback. You had the, the the Star Cruiser, the, the Willow Star news, yeah. Yeah. all of it, all, all of it at the same time. The Willow news, yeah, all of it. Uh, right. So so it's like, why were these decisions made? Look, Higer is. He's a master at this kind of media mm-hmm. orchestration where where they can uh, shape a narrative, craft a narrative, provide a narrative, right? And and seemingly, you know, take momentum out of one executive, put it towards another. Like, we saw this a lot with the Chapek era, interestingly yeah. enough, where he was being stymied at every single turn. Was that because of Iger's influence? I mean... It's interesting when asked about uh, Variety providing one of the first reviews for Indy Five, he he actually said, "Oh man, I'm relieved." Why did he say that? You know why? Why did he say that if um, we are supposed to believe that there is no tie specifically to Iger towards some of these media outlets? I think there is. I think there. Well, is, th- this is revelatory that there might be. That's especially weird that he said. I didn't even know he said that. It's especially weird that he that he felt relieved with Variety because Variety was the one who really pushed the lukewarm reception. Isn't that interesting? Like maybe, that was weird. I don't know. I mean, if we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, maybe he thought that they would go light on the film compared to maybe. some of the others. I don't know. I That's apparently weird. he was very relieved though that he, that that Variety got the first uh, article up. But it's it's putting Indiana Jones in a very very bad position because well now that's bring everybody that can and you have some of these first reviews being posted now people for the next six weeks OG I think you pointed this out which I think is a brilliant point for the next six weeks people are going to see that Rotten Tomato yeah. score and they're going to see those bad reviews and reinforce this idea that this is a bad film rather than convincing people that you should see this film because it is uh, Indiana Jones' swan song I think that was deliberate I think that's a way to get back at Kathleen Kennedy all things considered because of the timing of all of these things mm-hmm. just like yeah. Ending the Lake Nota project is a way to get back at the Sands. Yeah. And as we always say on this channel, a coincidence is never a coincidence. It's not. No, especially not with Bob Iger. Bob Iger is a brilliant chess player. And for him to drop three bombshells the day of the indie premiere, three, the Disney Plus Purge, the Star Cruiser, and the Lake Nota News, all within the same day of Indy 5, I don't know, like something's going on with that. Do you, do you think they're going to do that with Little Mermaid? You think when Little Mermaid's opening weekend comes about, they're going to drop no. three major news stories like that? No. There's not a chance no. in hell they're going to do that. No way. Because Disney believes in that mermaid movie, and they believe in it quite a bit. Obviously, they don't believe in Indy 5. They wanted to bury that Cannes Film Festival news with all yes. this other stuff. Because you couldn't, I mean, I was looking at, uh, you know, just like the the mass market news feeds, Google news feed, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, you know, Microsoft's news feed. There's a couple of others that I kind of look at to see what the normies are being told. I couldn't even find any Jones Five reviews anywhere. At most, I got was uh, there was a there was a teary reception from Harrison Ford at Can. You know, that was the most I ever got. So they definitely buried that 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 news. Unfortunately, it is kind of percolating through as it is it tends to do. But but I mean. The day that all of this stuff was announced between Lake Nona, between the Indiana Jones 5 reviews, between the Star Cruiser, you know, just all this stuff. It was a dark day for Disney. This was this was a this was mm-hmm. a tough few hours there. 
um, that I think will 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 ultimately reshape the company in some ways. Look, I mean, right. is Kathleen Kennedy out the door? I think you have to agree that she's not in the best position right now, for sure. Especially because she wasn't, I guess, told about some of these things that were actually happening when they took place. Um, her being left out of the loop, I think, is interesting. Uh-huh. Like Nona. You know, the, the the Star Cruiser, when was the last time you even heard of a, a Disney Resort closing? I have never heard of that. It, at, at most, it's reimagined to something else but or, 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 you know, put on hiatus during that period. This was uh, this was a this was a dark time. This was a dark day here. Yeah. And they have to yeah. and, and they have to when when you have extraordinary circumstances, you have to respond in bold ways. And that's why it kind of brings me full circle to what I was saying earlier on in this conversation with, with David Zazoff. And, he, you know, I know a lot of people didn't like when he canceled Bagger. I know a lot of people don't like when he canceled all these projects and it seems like so extreme and this, that, and the other, but you have to understand that these studios, they're under a lot of pressure right now. They are not doing well. And to be honest with you, when, when Bob Iger at that quarterly earnings call the other day said that we want to um, bring Hulu into Disney Plus, I was kind of disappointed because I like the idea of being bold right now. I think you need yeah. to be bold and you need to think differently and really kind of sh- aim for the fences. And I think the Hulu Disney Plus merger felt very boring. It felt like a decision that should have been made like a year and a half ago, not right now when things are really, really rough. And I think that these moves that he's making right now canceling um the star cruiser um and like nona those are more bold moves that i think mm-hmm. while negative i think i feel more optimistic overall just because i feel like that's the kind of move that should be being made right now when you have an extraordinary time you got to respond uh, a lot more in a lot more bold way and 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 it just needs to be done go ahead Dre. That's a, no. That's a, I, I was going to say that was a fantastic point of juxtaposing the recent announcements from coming out from the Disney Company to Zasloff and making those bold decisions to to, to put that company, uh, that new entity, in a path of profitability. Right? You have to make some tough decisions, and I just, I guess I I wasn't expecting Iger to make those decisions, but he actually mm. is. In addition, you know they are bringing on some. They are doing some interesting things, specifically with ESPN. Right? Um, Pat McAfee is now part of the you know. As the ESPN network, uh, he may have got some pushback because of oh, selling out to corporate overlords or whatever, but that is a huge, huge gain for ESPN right there. He has been on the kind of the forefront of this kind of more youth orientated kind of lay back down to earth type kind of uh, uh, um, almost independent feeling kind of media uh, sports media content. So, uh, you know, to bring him into the fold, I think is really, really interesting. I think they are making some bold moves right here. Yeah. Like you said, the Hulu thing wasn't necessarily encouraging. I mean, that's what Chapek was talking about uh, so yeah. over some years ago. Do we necessarily make the same decisions now? It's very interesting, but uh, you know, Give them credit. At least they're they're making the hard decisions now in order right. to thrive later. That's very challenging. It is. Now I, I want to give credit to our our friend the friend and channel Alia. She brought this up to me, and I think this is a very, very interesting. It's all tied to this. So I guess Matt Bellani, she's she's a uh, well, well, we're all fans to be honest of Matt Bellani, but Matt right. Bellani was saying that if Disney moves forward with this plan for ESPN to go mm. like to straight to streaming, I believe. Yes, that news dropped a few days ago. It would it would completely destroy linear tele like c- cable TV. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it would. Which is because it? even the earnings call they were touting, hey, sports were were was a segment of our linear business that was doing very very well and driving that segment of the business forward. You're exactly right, OG. They take ESPN off and some of their sports related content. Where's your driver for that linear legacy distribution channel? Right, and, but and what does that mean though for the for the also the the conversations with Comcast and Hulu? Is Disney using that as a threat? Hey, we'll tank your cable business if you don't play ball. Well, we'll go ahead and put ESPN on the streamer, and uh, where are you at now? Is yeah. that possibly what's going on with that as well? Mm-hmm. Because uh, uh, those those uh, cable contracts were negotiated in such a way that you had to get ESPN if you wanted a cable subscription, right? right. Which inflated the price and so forth. So when you take ESPN out, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the direct TV thing with, um, I think it was direct TV, uh, satellite company. I, I don't remember actually now, uh, they used to have NFL Sunday ticket, right? And a lot of people would get that specific uh, cable company product in order to get NFL Sunday ticket where you could get all the NFL games no matter where you lived to your home. 
Um, well, when that went to YouTube, how do you think that stuff like company is doing now? Because a lot of people were only getting it for that specific product. Now it's with YouTube. That whole thing has changed. In a similar way, do we do we foresee ESPN changing the kind of cable landscape if they pull out and have all of their content right. streaming? We have heard Iger talk about how they want to put more stuff on ESPN Plus and have more of that uh, switched over to DTC. Uh, there, there are some chess moves being played out here on a very large scale between corporate giants. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Higer navigates those waters. Uh-huh.